Okay, thank you. And uh, David, notice how we don't have the uh, technical difficulties of uh, changing machines here uh, as we go from a Mac to Linux box. And I'm Dr. Raymond Moberly. I'm an educator at San Diego State, uh, and I'm a small business owner. And despite having two things going, I still very underutilizes, and of course, like many, undercompensated. So uh, find find more opportunity for me. I, but Python has been a growing interest. In October, I presented, actually September, I'm sorry, I presented on the use of Colab, which is sort of the Google Docs of Jupyter Notebooks and allows you to share your code and interactively co-develop, which helps me a lot because I don't consider myself a Python expert. And I also uh, really benefit from being able to talk about code without having to lean over anybody else's keyboard. And Colab kind of got the job done for me and it still works during isolation. And I was looking for something to collaboratively develop. Back in September, I worked with a friend and we had a little bit of a model that he thought he was gonna get some money for and that didn't really go anywhere. And then I had some stuff I was doing for work that I didn't really wanna share. But everybody's talking about the susceptible infected recovered model because it's all about infectious disease. And it's, it's a pretty simple coupled system of first order linear differential equations. I'm sorry, not they're not linear, but uh, they are first order ordinary differential equations where the rate of infections increases as a product of the number of susceptible individuals times the number of already infected individuals. And then the infected individuals do recover with an exponential decay uh, in terms of the number that are infected if you just left that alone. A pretty simple model. And you've, you've seen this because we've talked about the number of infected. And, and unfortunately, that's the red curve. That's the curve that everybody talks about. Don't talk about how many actually uh, have been infected over time, which is the recovered with immunity once the infected goes finally to zero and possibly susceptible might go to zero depending on just how aggressive in a community the infection or the infectious agent might be. And I look at this and I don't get a lot out of this graph. I, I really don't like it that much. It does, And it doesn't allow me to grow the model with any additional complexity. And some of you might say, well, I, I need to talk about those who've been exposed as well as those who've been infected. That's the SEIR model. And I'd, I'd be happy to model that one. I'm not so uh, jazzed about the science as much as what I could do with the model. And to begin with, this graph just didn't get the job done for me. And I, I needed something more like a cumulative graph. So I, uh, with the help of the group at, on the Saturday study group, I came up with a fill-in graph. And I hope we can eliminate the term flatten the curve and instead talk about the infected as a, a layer between those that are susceptible and those that are recovered and, and squeeze the lamina out over time instead of flatten the curve. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about how, oh, now to do this, I have to switch what my share is. That's the tricky thing. All right, let me see if I can figure that out. You're all, you are all with me, but where do I switch that? There we go. You're sharing so your whole desktop, to, so you should be I able have to, to stop tab. the share. I should have shared the whole desktop. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you. That's what I'm going to do. And let's go now to my Python. And this is a Google Collab Jupyter Notebook uh, style format. And it's, it's pretty neat. This was actually something I found on the web for the SIR model. They used a SciPy integrate, which has a neat little derivative function when you're building a system. I didn't really know how to maintain that, so I got rid of it, built my own loop. Uh, but I might go back to using the SciPy just because it was pretty cool. And I'll just run it. And I, that's pretty easy. And if, uh, if multiple people were working on it at the same time as we were on Saturday, we can run the portions of code and everybody can make changes and we move forward. Although the shared runtime is a little bit weird. Anyway, um, we start out with uh, the parameters of the disease and the recovery rate. And then we see the graph of susceptible, infected, and recovered. And then with this uh, fill between was the plot that Jorge uh, helped guide me towards. And yes, that works. Although it's really nasty having to put in these array data to fill in the gaps and I have to take the sums of the arrays. Although I could store all those as additional variables. It just seemed a little bit data intensive. But there's my nifty graph. And you might say, well, where do I want to go with this? Well, anything I want to do, I want to visualize as I increase the, the complexity of the model. Uh, just to show you one thing that I thought was pretty easy to do was uh, turn it into the susceptible infected dead and recovered model. 
uh, where I just added another parameter to uh, indicate that a certain portion of the infected would in fact be deceased. And so I built that into my loop and let me go ahead and run all that. And that, pay no attention to the actual parameters. Uh, R0 being a three might sound really scary to you and that's okay, we can change the model or the model parameters to, uh, to make it interesting. And I, I think if I add died onto the three line graph and made it four lines, you can't read that at all. So I, I would like to get rid of the line graph, get rid of flatten the curve. And here you can see, clearly see over time how death continues to increase, but at some point it's gonna, it's gonna flatten out uh, just as the, uh, the number of infected goes to zero at some point in time. And maybe, maybe not everybody gets uh, exposed or goes from susceptible to uh, recovered. And that's kind of the SIDR model. I could I then add a, a layer in there for the exposed, which is of interest because those that are exposed may transmit the disease but are not yet showing symptoms. Uh, we could have a couple different modes, uh, modalities of uh, infection. Those that are infected and under treatment might be of particular interest to us, as well as uh, what I'd really like to do with this is stratify the population, doing things like uh, grouping the population into uh, transmittive but not entirely transmittive groups, and then looking at it from different susceptibilities by something like age or other strata. And, and I think this, just this visualization will help me to move forward on that. And that's my talk. Nice. Thank you. Are you are you able to take questions? We probably have a, a couple minutes for questions if you're if you're sure. Willing. I can even I can even change the code if anybody wants to, or they can log in with that long URL and change the code for me. You can post it in the <laughs> but chat. But Saturday Saturday we'll make some more changes on the code. I think that uh, that seemed like a pretty good success, sharing this kind of model with folks. Any questions? Uh, sure, I have. Thanks. One. Uh, hey, Raymond. Um, so there is a talk like there is this, um, the virus mutates. How hard it would it for you to be to introduce reinfections in the things? Like so I, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard to, uh, to split this so that you were dealing with competing viruses. Uh, that something like a predator prey model, except that there would be two predators, uh, could be easily worked into the, uh, to the loop. But it's not second one. It would be like um, it's constantly like there oh, is oh, a, oh, you're saying, there is a uh, drift. Yeah. It's, so then you're then you're recovered with immunity and recovered without immunity, or uh, or pretty much yeah. So there is, but I think what you'd want to do is turn the uh, immunity back to zero. But I I guess what I I, I want to reiterate if if you do have a mutating virus, you have multiple species. Uh, that's not right. quite the right word, but they would be uh, they would be competing for. Uh, it's it's the inverse of survival of the fittest. Right, they would be competing, but they would also be coming up. So it's not just two, like they would slowly over time, they would be like more and more of those. Yeah, yeah, the SIR, the SIR assumes a simple, uh, simple infected uh -huh. agent with a built-in immunity once you've recovered. Okay. Um, I have a question, uh, Dr. Moberly. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned something about the data set. I don't know if this is applicable, but um, I know a lot of people use like census data for, you know, making very interesting queries like uh, the data cube. Um, do you think the CDC will ever open up their data set after COVID has gone away? Well, I, I think the CDC does have access to data that they can't share based on HIPAA restrictions, but they certainly have uh, the ability to uh, produce a data set that can be publicly consumed. Is that, uh, I mean, there, there have been adequate, uh, public data sets to, to work with, but obviously the more information that you get with actual census type criteria would be, would be great. Yeah. Yeah. That was my question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would love to train this sort of thing. That's, that's, that's the way you would really work. 